So we just looked at imperative and declarative, but I just want to clarify that Terraform, even though it's a declarative language, it has imperative-like features. So I've coined the phrase declarative plus. And so Terraform kind of gives you the best of both worlds. So you have declarative and imperative, and then the three types. So our YAML, JSON, XML, we have Terraform language, which actually utilizes HCL underneath. And then you have programming languages on the right-hand side, like Ruby, Python, JavaScript, uh, what have you, right? So when we're looking at YAML or JSON, these are very limited languages um, or scripting languages where uh, you know, you don't really have any kind of complex data types. You probably don't have a whole lot of uh, robust functions, but in some cases you can extend that uh, base behavior. So in the case of CloudFormation, which uses YAML or JSON files, they have a concept called macros. So you can uh, extend it a bit, but again, it's very inflexible. And so a lot of people are led to go and use CDK. So Terraform is great because it kind of has a lot of stuff you'd see in programming languages like for loops, dynamic blocks, locals. It also has complex data structures and a lot of functions around using those data structures. And so it allows you to stay in that declarative world, but having the stuff that you generally need when you're in the imperative world. When you're in the imperative side, uh, the idea is that the language is what you're utilizing. So you can do anything that the programming language allows you to do. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of show you that Terraform sits in the middle, okay?